when you debunk evolution, in their eyes, you're attacking the foundation of their religion. Ew. Matt Powell official. Official, yeah. You officially need a biology textbook. <laughs> Poor old Matt. He's still convinced the entire scientific community has got it wrong about everything. From our origins to the very fabric of the universe. So I thought we would, uh, maybe have a look? Laugh at him a bit? How does that sound? Good? Let's do it then. Shut up and sit down, you big bald f***. Subscribe. If you believe in Darwinian evolution, you have been scammed. You've bought into a lie. Let me tell you, there is no evidence to suggest that our ancestor was a jellyfish or a rat or some sort of primate. Okay, there's no evidence our ancestors were jellyfish, rats, or some sort of primate. And you're absolutely right about the first two. We didn't evolve from modern jellyfish or rats. That's not how it works. But the no primate part, well, newsflash, we are primates. You are, Matt. It's not a scam. It's basic biology. The evidence when we look in science suggests that we descended from two humans. We can take our DNA and we can actually trace it back using the Y chromosome and also mitochondrial DNA to see that we descended from two initial ancestors roughly 6,000 years ago. Two initial ancestors lived 6,000 years ago and you think that's based on DNA evidence? Are you taking a piss? The problem is, Matt, for you, you've conveniently forgotten that geneticists place mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam living hundreds of thousands of years ago in separate populations. If your numbers were officially correct, <laughs> Humanity would be a genetic train wreck from an extremely limited and incestuous gene pool. <laughs> In science, we're finding all sorts of things that actually contradict evolution and that disprove evolution. Oh, we're finding all sorts of things that disprove evolution, are we? Well, that's funny because the entire scientific community seems to have missed these world-shattering discoveries, Matt. If anybody actually disproved evolution, they wouldn't be making vague claims on YouTube. They'd be accepting a Nobel Prize. We won the Nobel Prize! And fundamentally reshaping all of biology and medicine. So until then, these contradictions are probably just misinterpretations, misunderstandings, or conveniently forgotten facts. You tell us which it is, young Matthew. You think about the Big Bang Theory, they're claiming that all of the matter that you see, everything around you, was condensed into an infinitely dense hot point, and then that hot point somehow exploded, and here we are. No, Matt. It's only creationists who think that. And what you just said sounds less like cosmology and more like my old washing machine after a particularly bad spin cycle. The Big Bang was not an explosion in space, Matt. It was the rapid expansion of space itself. Now, it's a subtle but officially important distinction when you're talking about the entire universe. Nobody thinks that all the matter in the universe as it is today was created by the Big Bang. That was a process that took billions of years after the Big Bang. Whether you believe it or not, that's the beauty of facts, see Matt? They don't care about your worldview, they care about what can be demonstrated with evidence. It created time, space and nature. But the fact of the matter is that that would be a violation of the laws of thermodynamics. You don't get order out of chaos. Not only that, you can't get something from nothing. All the laws of thermodynamics? So you're an amateur physicist as well as a biologist. But let's be honest, he probably learned physics from a fortune cookie, didn't he? Anyway, the second law states that entropy increases in a closed system. The early universe, however, was in an incredibly uniform and simple state, which from a thermodynamic perspective is highly ordered. The Big Bang describes its expansion and evolution into more complex structures like stars and galaxies, which is entirely consistent with thermodynamics as the overall entropy of the universe continues to increase. Matt conflates chaos with thermodynamic entropy and misapplies the law to the entire universe's origin as if it were local, a closed system. And Energy can only be converted. It cannot be created or destroyed. That's the first law of thermodynamics. So 
Well, credit where credit's due, Matt can certainly state the first law of thermodynamics. Energy can't be created or destroyed. Fantastic. Now, if only he'd apply that to the Big Bang, which describes the universe expanding from an incredibly dense, energetic state, not magically conjuring itself from nothing. It's not something from nothing. It's something from something extremely compact. It's like saying a coil spring violates physics by releasing energy. To say that you could take a rock that's tiny and let it morph into a rock that's gigantic like a boulder, that's not possible. Right, so we're on to geology now. Damn, Matt, you're a triple threat kind of guy. I had no idea. But you know what? You're absolutely right. Because that's not how rocks work. And more importantly, that's not how evolution works or geology or physics. It's almost like you're inventing stupid scenarios to try and disprove science instead of trying to understand what science actually says. <laughs> Man. You are one pathetic loser. But in the Big Bang Theory, supposedly a piece of dust, a small speck of dust exploded or rapidly expanded and formed planets and galaxies and oceans. Stop trying to compress 13.8 billion years of cosmic evolution into one single ridiculous moment. The Big Bang wasn't a dust bomb, it was the expansion of the universe. Galaxies, stars, planets, even the dust needed to make them. Formed over billions of years thanks to gravity and nuclear fusion. That's just the way it was, pal. That's how physics works. What you were saying is like claiming that if you throw a seed into the ground, one pop and you've got a forest. My friend. Your friend? You don't mean Mr. Hovind, do you? Not a doctor. Darwinian evolution and Big Bang cosmology is all a big farce. It's not true. The idea that we descended from slime, that soup was eroded from rocks and we came into existence from that soup, that's a lie. That's not true. Big Bang cosmology is a big farce. Isn't farce a good word? Farce. But then I think you were trying to describe abiogenesis, not uh, what I called it once before. If you know, you know. But he was, I think he was trying to describe abiogenesis, a slimy soup that was eroded from rocks and we came into existence from that soup. Matt, that's not a scientific theory. That's just a wild, unscientific caricature that only exists in your head. You're arguing against fiction, then declaring it not true. Officially? <laughs> That's how you know he's making his own arguments up as he goes along. You don't get order out of chaos, but you also don't get life from non-living material. You can't get unconscious dead material to just become alive on its own. I tell you what, Matt, I don't know what you're smoking, but I'd love to try some. What the hell are you talking about? Who says life came from inanimate objects? I'll tell you, shall I? Creationists. Nobody else says it. Science isn't proposing that. We're talking about a gradual chemical journey from simple organic molecules to self-replicating systems over billions of years and under specific early earth conditions. It's not a sudden magical poof from a rock. You're arguing against the caricature of abiogenesis, not the actual scientific hypothesis. An outside force, i.e. the Lord God, had to create all of the matter and energy we see as well as the living organisms that are on planet Earth. And there it is, the God of the gaps argument, when actual science gets too complicated, just invoke a deity to explain everything. I mean, it's certainly a simple explanation if you're not really interested in evidence or testable hypothesis. And so they're claiming in science today, and I find it kind of hilarious, that one of our earliest ancestors was a jellyfish and I think that that just sounds funny. You know, you ask people, do you think that your ancestor was a jellyfish? And they always chuckle. They think it's kind of funny. Yeah, hysterical man. <laughs> You're a comic genius. And I suppose believing that God did it all in a week sounds plausible to you. The same God that has never revealed himself to anyone. Oh, oh no. The same God that allows suffering and war just snapped his godly fingers and hey presto, we all exist. Oh yeah, and the ingredients God used? A bit of old dirt off the ground. 
And what is dirt mostly comprised of? You guessed it, folks. Rock. So tell us again, Matt, who is it that thinks we came from rocks? Because it is ridiculous. It is ludicrous and, and kind of hilarious. And it really would be funny if so many people did not actually believe in it. You have to understand when you're talking to somebody who believes in evolution and who, who believes in this stuff, you're talking with an individual that takes it seriously like somebody would take their religion. What a profoundly misguided insight into how science works. We don't believe in evolution like a religion, Matt. We understand it's based on observable evidence, testable hypothesis, and mountains of data. The only thing ludicrous here is equating a verifiable reality with a personal conviction to avoid engaging with the facts. When you debunk evolution, in their eyes, you're attacking the foundation of their religion. And they often dig in and will not listen to what you're saying. So it's important to approach people who believe in evolution with love and compassion. But it's also so important to make sure to simply point out the falsehoods and the stupidity of this that we descended from a fish-like creature. I mean, come on. Love and compassion for those who believe evolution like a religion. Then you immediately point out the stupidity of a fish-like creature ancestry. Your compassion has more holes in it than your scientific arguments, Matt. But they do say there's no hate like Christian love. They're claiming that Curious George was our ancestor, that an ape-like animal was our ancestor. Matt, nobody is saying your grandma was a fictional cartoon monkey. We share a common ancestor with apes, which was an ape-like creature, but crucially, not a modern ape. It's truly officially hilarious. <laughs> How often you invent ridiculous straw man arguments, complete with a yellow hat in this case, just so you can debunk them. I think yeah, that's debatable. People should really consider being more skeptical of what they're being taught in universities across America. What, and they should listen to people like you instead? I really can't see that catching on, Matt. Sorry. We're finding dinosaur blood cells. Think about that. And you think that disproves billions of years of evolution? Now here's the thing, Matt. Scientists are finding incredibly tough, degraded proteins and structures, but it's not fresh blood ready for transfusion. It's a resilient organic material preserved under unique conditions, which is amazing, yeah, but doesn't magically shorten Earth's history. It's officially hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> How often creationists misrepresent rare discoveries to fit their predetermined narrative. Dinosaurs in evolution supposedly existed 65 million years ago, yet we're finding intact dinosaur organs, blood cells, collagen in dinosaur bones. Remember collagen? is the soft material that's inside of your bones? No, they're not, Matt. That's a blatant lie. So you're saying the paleontologists are just pulling out 65 million year old dinosaur livers and giving them a quick dissection. Do you even hear what you're saying? We are finding so much evidence that dinosaurs existed much more recently than people have presupposed. We are finding just incredible things in science today that are not really being covered. Matt, if it's not being covered by science, it probably isn't science. I'm just saying. Because if scientists found actual proof that dinosaurs died last Tuesday, they would totally suppress it. That's just how Nobel Prizes for world-shattering discoveries are handed out. We find proof of Noah's flood. We find whales on mountains. Oh, big whoop, you find mountains in Wales, but you don't hear me shouting about it. God is real. You can put your faith in Jesus, that he actually existed. 98.9% .9 of scholars believe that Jesus existed. So after attempting to debunk billions of years of scientific evidence, his big mic drop is to abruptly jump to a theological declaration. Brilliant, Matt. But that's not a scientific argument against the Big Bang, is it? Or a substitute for genetics. It's hilarious how you try to use... Do you know, actually, at this point, it makes no difference at all. Carry on, Matt. Evolution is an unscientific scam. 
My friend, do not be tricked, do not be scammed, do not be conned into thinking that evolution is even a possibility. Right, now after failing to debunk evolution with Curious George and recent dinosaur blood, your final argument is just a desperate repetition of insults. Evolution isn't a possibility, Matt. It's an observable, evidence-backed fact. Can you say the same? Because from where we are standing... You couldn't back up a phone, you c Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again on Friday. Love you. Bye. Except for you, Matt, you can suck my d Just quickly before you go, I'm a bit pissed off today. I hope it didn't show too much in the video, but I'll explain why. Now, I've paid a carpenter to make a double bed for me and Mrs. Blinder. He only done a bunk, haven't he? I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't